All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Aerospace Passenger and Utility System mod, or APUS for short, which is being made by form user Nezd. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a fun new shuttle system, which is based off of the 1.875 size variety of parts, which is pretty cool to have a smaller shuttle system. So let's uh, jump right on into the space plane hangar and have a look at what all we do get. Now let's quickly grab a Mark III cockpit, you know, the typical shuttle cockpit a lot of people use, and then just grab one of the command pods here for the APUS system just to show off the size difference. Again, this is based off of the 1.875 meter size variety of parts, so nice and smaller. But let's hit new and then turn on janitor's closet just leaving on APUS shuttles and we'll actually start with the Swift shuttle cockpit which is my personal favorite of the three and it doesn't look like much now you know missing the nose and all but that will be remedied shortly once we get to fuel tanks all in all a very nice stock alike shuttle cockpit here which will hold within it three Kerbals with a minimum of a one to operate has a data transmitter is of course a lifting surface with reaction wheel crew report 200 electric charge and 15 monopropellant and has two different variants for the color of the tiles under here where you can either go with the white tiles or black tiles and any of these parts that do have the tiled bottom will have those two options so I'm not gonna mention that again and while I'm on that thinking we got a fair few fuel tanks, so I probably won't mention going forward specific numbers for uh, resources, just that they have them, because we got a lot to go through here. Now, the next cockpit we have is the uh, schooner one, which at first glance I thought would be a unmanned command pod, but instead it is in fact a crewed one with a capacity of five Kerbals, with a minimum of one to operate. It does have a built-in ablator, data transmitter, lifting surface, reaction wheel, crew report, the electric charge, monopropellant, and all in all is a very good looking. I really, really love the whole look and design of this thing. It is pretty darn cool. I mean, come on, who wouldn't love that? And finally, if we actually pop that one off, we have the final blizzard control module, which is an unmanned command pod here, and in fact is meant to be the tail end of the shuttle. And of course, as I mentioned, is unmanned, has a built-in control surface right here data transmitter reaction wheel SAS a whole lot of electric charge and up to 50 monopropellant and a fun feature of this since it is meant to be the tail end of your ship you may want to put an engine back there and by default you only have one node as you can see but we can right click and go into the cluster nodes button here and switch it from single to double, of course, adding in, making it two nodes now. We then have the uh, double plus one, which adds three in a triangular pattern. And then we also have triple, which does the exact same thing of three in a triangular pattern. I don't know why we have the option of double plus one and triple, but hey, whichever you prefer to go with grammatically, have added and enjoy but overall I do like that we can change the number of nodes here so we can add more or less engines assuming get at no more than three and uh, let's just chuck that off and then head down into the fuel tanks category where we've got a few and the first ones are all monopropellant based and we have them in three size varieties of either a small a medium or a large version, and no matter which one of these you choose, they can of course be attached via nodes or radially, radially to the outside of the ship. And all in all, make for some good small fuel tanks, whether you're putting them inside the cargo bay or outside the ship, wherever you desire them. Now, if you are using, say, the Blizzard control module, and you don't feel like having a normal control pod up at the front being your nose, you can actually choose 
one of three noses here of the K-37, one which has jet fuel, one which has monopropellant, and one which holds liquid fuel and oxidizer. So either just liquid fuel or plus oxidizer, whichever you're wanting to go with there. All of them do look the same and also have a lovely little cargo bay in here for you to use for any of your unmanned shuttle cargo drones, which is a fun little feature so you can add in even more resources and who doesn't love that now next are the three different noses for this particular cockpit and again we have them in either liquid fuel liquid fuel and oxidizer or monopropellant and the only difference between the three of these is the color of that stripe right there on the nose with gray being for liquid fuel and oxidizer the typical monopropellant orange and and then just for liquid fuel, it's just a plain white nose with no stripe whatsoever. And with that on there, it really does complete the whole command pod there, making it look very, very good. I love it. Now after that, we have some pretty typical uh, liquid fuel storage fuel tanks i don't know where my brain went on that one fuel tanks yes again in different size varieties so this set of them is all liquid fuel where we have either a small tank a slightly larger tank a slightly larger tank than that then an even larger tank if i can actually grab it there excellent and then of course the really big tank there we go so you can add in a whole lot of liquid fuel we then have the same setup for liquid fuel and oxidizer with the small not quite so small the uh, kind of large oop didn't click there we go the even larger and of course uh, the largest Excellent. And finally, we have it in the monopropellant variety, this time though only having the small, the medium-ish, and then the, you know, not quite large yet compared to the others. And again, it has that same stripe color system, just as we saw with the noses, which is pretty neat. Actually, I'm probably going to want one or two of these on there for some other parts. There we are. Now next in engines, we only have two. One being being the BBQ-150 liquid fuel engine, which produces 150 max kilonewtons of thrust using liquid fuel and oxidizer, has a 6 degree vectoring range, and all in all, pretty nice little engine. And with the proper back end that we had on the Blizzard, you could have up to three of these back there. Always useful. And then we also do have the SRB 500 with a whopping 500 kilonewtons of thrust. And it's just a fun, a big old solid rocket booster. And those are always fun to have. Now, uh, next in command and control, we have a very interesting RCS system where each of these can sort of fit together like Lego pieces. I love it. So we have a RCS 45 degree, a front cap, a front two, a front rear cap, rear two, rear three, and then slide one, slide two, and slide three. And each of these fits together. So say if we had the slide three, which of course, as you can see here, has three different uh, nozzles for the RCS, we can pop that right on the side. And then, hey, if we want more facing forward, we can grab the front two and there we go they connect together and can move as one block now since they do have attachment nodes and say we want an end cap with the rear two we just need to pop that on there and once more we can move the whole block together once we've customized it to our liking and not all of them of course do have rcs on them we do have things like the just plain old rear cap here which just brings it to a nice end without a harsh straight line finish to the other RCS block and even of course on the front one we have just a front cap piece very nice and once more all attaching to those nodes so you can move them around it's a pretty cool little system I very much like this you can make all sorts of different RCS blocks with it now next in structural we've got three fun parts the first is pretty cool because well what if you don't want your shuttle to just end in a tail like with the blizzard with just a flat back well on structural now we have the k37 shuttle tail where we can pop 
pop that there and it sort of flares it out a bit more for you to have a bit more shape to your shuttle, which is pretty cool. And this has the similar node system, but only having single, double, or triple. No double plus one on this one here. We then also have an adapter to the 2.5 meter size variety, which just goes right on there. And then we also have just a shuttle tailplate to end it you know, just in that boring back system. But again, with that cluster node of single, double, or triple, always handy. Now, next in coupling, we only have one part, a docking airlock, which is pretty cool. If we actually uh, spin this around correctly, there it is. So we have, of course, the docking port here, which we can extend upwards, and of course have a door here for Kerbals to get in and out of, and it does hold one Kerbal crew member and has a temporary interior that's still a work in progress. But all in all, it's a pretty awesome airlock. Lock. I really love the look of this thing. It's gorgeous. And then moving on to payload, if we just bump all this stuff off, we have four different sizes of cargo bays with cargo bay doors of either the small, not quite so small, I'd say medium-ish, and then of course a large variety here, all of which can close up just like any other, and all in all, a pretty good, useful cargo bay. We then have these hull pieces, which are just, you know, empty hulls. Again, in the small, not quite so small, medium-ish, and a large size categories, and if I can actually attach it, there we go. Oh, I had two, that's why I was, oh god, I had three! I must have... <laughs> Oh boy, all sorts of things going wrong. And it is just a solid hull interior for you to do whatever you want with, which is pretty cool. And so we can bump those off. Now in aerodynamics, sadly, we have nothing. In ground, we have a modified stock landing gear, the LY35 modified APUS version, which has the, uh, I think... You know, the main only change is the change of the colors on here to match with your tile choice. Couldn't tell if there was any other real big changes to it, but yes, we do have a nice little wheel. Now in thermal, we got nothing. In electrical, we do have a large battery, which of course fits in the fuselage system there. And communication, nothing. Science, nothing. But in utility, we have three different cabins. One, the commuter cabin that holds a six Kerbals. We then have the Royal Yacht VIP cabin that holds five. And then we have an entrance module, which only holds one. And sadly, that's the one crude bit that doesn't have an interior right now. Now, granted, all the interiors are a work in progress, but still, that's the one without one at the moment. Hopefully that'll change soon. But that is all the parts, so let's leave and go take a look first at those interiors that we do get. I've got a crew ship right here on the runway for us to take a look at. And all we simply need to do is, of course, head in first to the Swift cockpit here, where we have our Kerbal crew. Now, as you can see, like I said, it is still work in progress interiors, but it is nice having this nonetheless. So we do have something for now. Can't wait to see what it looks like, though, when finished. And we have the four different crew, or actually, no, three seats, three seats in this one. And then we go back to the uh, economy cabin with the six different Kerbals in here, all at their different economy seats. Then we have the VIP cabin, which, uh, you know, a lot more leg room, bigger windows, lovely table, all in all pretty nice. Five crew members in here. And then we have the... Um, Suddenly I'm forgetting the name of the other command pod, but yes, the other cockpit module, once more work in progress, but very good look to it. Very nice with the uh, five different Kerbals, yes. And then here's the airlock, uh, which is upside down because I had to put it that way because of attachment points. But yes, a uh, you know nice cramped little airlock for you to enjoy. And that, those are the interiors. So let's go to the tracking station, take a look at a shuttle that I built pretty quickly earlier up in orbit. No, that's the crew one. There we go. And we'll just go fly this. It's a pretty 
standard shuttle, nothing too fancy. I did build some custom RCS blocks here, and of course I have the glorious Swift shuttle cockpit, and we do have the cargo bay, which we can open with that lovely airlock there, and then of course, you know, that nice wider rear end. I, I like it. It's a lot more fun to me than just the straight back shuttle. I do like that it has that option. And of course, with the three engines back there for us, it's all in all a pretty nice system that I do a very much enjoy and has so much potential and with more to come. On the mod page, there is mention of a few parts that are in the works, including I believe I read about a cargo bay with Bombay doors, which I think will be quite fun. But yes, I cannot wait to see how this mod advances in the future and what fun things we get next. But it is all in all just a good show shuttle parts mod which if you'd like to try out for yourself which i would certainly recommend you go and do you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual but that is going to be it for today i hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one